Hi guys, happy Wednesday. Welcome to my channel. My name is Chatty Kathy. Thank you so much for joining me again today. So last week we talked about sugar. So what have you learned about the labels on the foods that you're eating every day and the foods that you're feeding your children every day? What have you learned? Comment below, please, please let me know how great that you're doing now about reading these labels. And don't worry, I will have my podcast soon on how to read labels. And it's actually not that hard. Um, did you look up the documentaries? Did you watch them? What did you think? Oh my gosh, you're right. I know we should have known this stuff, but we don't. It's up to us and we can actually do this. So today we're going to talk about the enemy. And I'm saying the enemy, sorry. Somebody else said the enemy too. Actually, a couple of other people said this is our enemy. And the best way to help our bodies is to totally delete it out of our input, period. So it's only an enemy if you let it be an enemy, right? So just stay tuned and we'll be talking about this coming right up. So because of this enemy against our bodies and our health, high fructose corn syrup deserves to have its own podcast. And here it is, our enemy, high fructose corn syrup. This is how bad it is for your body and for your health and for your children's health, especially your children and your grandkids. Come on, people. High fructose corn syrup was actually introduced in 1957. It is a processed form of fructose and glucose. Remember, there has to be a balance, more glucose. High fructose corn syrup, of course, is made from corn. And then the corn goes to corn starch, and then it goes to corn syrup, and then it goes into a lab where the biochemists and the chemists turn most of the glucose into fructose because it's cheaper. So high fructose corn syrup is mostly fructose. Remember I said fructose was not good for you. Listen to my sugar lecture um, last week. Fructose acts like a fat in the body. It does not give you very much energy at all like glucose does, right? Big food started adding this to our foods in the early 70s because of beets and cane, which is where we got our regular sugar from. They got too expensive and corn is cheaper and it's so abundant. And now it's a freaking GMO. Watch my GMO lecture on corn on um, coming up soon too. So cane and beets are expensive, but corn is not. And they put it in our foods. High fructose corn syrup precedes sugar, and it is in most of our processed foods. It says about 75%, I say it's most, mostly more than that. Even in foods that claim low fat, no sugar, low cholesterol, good for the diabetics, good for renal problems, good for your children, good for grandpa and grandma, it's good in your organic food, it's good for your healthy food, and it's good for you. There's about 500 that I read in a couple articles, different names for the hidden sugars and the fake sugars, and over a hundred of them for high fructose corn syrup. Those sneaky, my goodness, am I allowed to say that on phone? Oh, sorry. <laughs> if the companies use fructose for sweetener, high fructose corn syrup for sweeteners, they're allowed to say that there is less sugar legally in our food. And when they talk about sugar, they're talking about sucrose. They're talking about the white refined sugar, right? High fructose corn syrup is the enemy. It's one of the most acidy foods that you can consume, right? Because of the chemical makeup of high fructose corn syrup, it does not need to be digested in your intestines, in your body, which means it does not get broken down where your microbiome is, which is actually probably a good thing because our bad bacteria would go cray cray, absolutely. High fructose corn syrup goes straight to your liver, just like alcohol does, right? And it quickly enters your bloodstream. Again, high fructose corn syrup can only be metabolized by your liver. Your poor riddle liver, oh my goodness. It messes up your liver in exactly the same way that medications do, that toxins do, right? That alcohol does. Artificial sweeteners and high fructose corn syrup can be 200 to 500 times sweeter than regular sugar. As it enters your bloodstream, it leads to fast insulin spikes that also contribute to hormonal problems. It contributes to possibly pancreatic exhaustion, 
which means it's going to be hard for your pancreas, your poor little pancreas too, to, de to deliver your insulin like it's supposed to. It contributes to weight loss resistance and increased weight gain, right? I'm telling you it does. Corn is a very high starchy carbohydrate vegetables, which means what? It's broken down like a sugar is, right? Like a starch is, like potatoes, right? Only the kernel itself is actually considered a grain, like in popcorn, right? Well, 88 to 92% of all corn is GMO. So even if you don't eat GMO foods or drinks, guess what? If you can't read the labels of the input of your food and drinks that you're putting in your body, you're probably getting high fructose corn syrup. And even if you have no medical problems, this man-made substance will mess up your sugar. It's going to mess up your liver. It's going to mess up your pancreas. It's going to mess up all of your body systems eventually. High fructose corn syrup is not good for anyone or even any animal. You know what? They use corn feed to fatten up livestock. It's not good for them either. They put high fructose corn syrup in your animal foods, in your dog and cat foods. Dog and cats don't eat grains. They don't definitely need to eat high fructose corn syrup. Why would they need sweet food, right? Research suggests that long-term levels of high fructose corn syrup consumption may be, they can't say it is, a significant factor in metabolic syndrome, which is what? It's insulin resistance, it's diabetes type two, it's elevated blood sugars, it's high blood pressure, it's high cholesterol, it's high triglycerides, right? Remember, fructose doesn't give you too much energy and it turns your triglycerides or your fat into fat and raises your cholesterol levels, right? And some of those fat globules, and I'm saying fat, not like soap tissue, are actually released into the bloodstream. And that increases your cholesterol levels and, and builds up plaques in your in your vessels in your um for your cardiovascular system and the vessels in your brain, right? They're kind of minute up there, right? They block the blood vessels in all your circulatory systems. And it messes up how your body can use insulin. That's called insulin resistance. You don't want to mess around with that stuff, people. Do you want to be a diabetic? I've had some of my patients say, oh, I eat that all the time. I just take more insulin. What? What? <sighs> Inside your brain, high fructose corn syrup messes with a hormone called leptin, okay? So leptin is one of the ones that tells you when you're not hungry anymore or when you should stop eating, when you're full. Leptin is an appetite suppressant. So too much fructose too much high fructose corn syrup keeps the brain from receiving those messages that you're full, that you need to stop. So you think that you're still hungry and you continue to eat even with a full stomach. This is actually called leptin resistance, right? Fructose also messes with your dopaminergic system, right? So the dopamine in your system makes you very, very happy and satisfied to eat that stuff and drink this stuff. <laughs> Don't tell me it's not addictive. Don't tell me it's not addictive. Look it up for yourself. Please look it up for yourself. Comment below your experience with high fructose corn syrup that you didn't even know, that you didn't even know. For fructose to work inside food as a powder, because usually they add syrups to it, but to, as a powder, they have to add anti-caking agents, you know, calcium citrate, um, starch, silicon dioxide, tricalcium phosphate. These are almost some of the same things that they put in white salt to keep it from caking. So most of the time they add syrup. And since people know corn syrup, corn solids, corn uh, malt syrups, whatever, so they're changing it to a powder so they don't have to add that in there. Any kind of additive is not good for you. So it's anti-caking to the product. What is it going to do for you? 
One study I read that pregnant moms drinking sweetened beverages while pregnant, both the child and the parent tend to score lower on intelligence tests. High fructose corn syrup is the worst sugar. It affects the, the hippocampus function, hippocampal function, excuse me, during important periods of development in a child. What did your mom drink when you were pregnant, right? You can change all this stuff now. It doesn't matter. Your mom didn't know. Don't be mad. Your mom did not know. That's the area of the brain that's actually for learning and memory, right? So dementia and Alzheimer's later on in life. Be careful of the food and drinks that your children are getting at home, at grandma's, at school, right? Be careful of what you're drinking if you're pregnant. That's the time you're supposed to eat the best and drink the best for your child, right? They're finding the greatest source of sugar for our children is actually sweetened drinks and in our cereals and in our yogurts, right? In 1980s, when Coke started adding high fructose corn syrup, because the other stuff was too expensive. You have high fructose corn syrup and energy drinks also. Everybody should just be drinking water, right? Our children and the adults. Make your own drinks, make your um, own fruit juices if you want to. You can add your own fruit to it and make it sweet and then eat the fruit at the end. Then you get the, the fiber also, that little special treat. I used to cut grapes in half and freeze them and then put it in the water as ice. And then grape juice, cha-ching, right? And then you get to eat the grapes afterwards, right? The cereals too. There's so many other choices for breakfast. Turn the boxes around. It'll say low sugar on the front. If you look at the box, the sugar could have a star by it because it's not enough to tell you, but then read all the sugars at the bottom. Your kids are gonna be upset for a while if you take that crap away. Well, too bad. Eventually, you'll see your little angels again right? When all that stuff is out of their system and it should be out of their system. And should we even talk about cavities, right? The number of cavities that are going up now because of the sugary foods. It is from sugary foods and drinks. Even if you brush well, even if you brush often, it still sticks to your teeth, right? It's like a glue. Our diet sodas have the fake sugars in them. So manufacturers can actually say that there's no sugar. Remember that what they mean is there's no refined white sugar or sucrose, right? That's what they're talking about. And they're allowed to say that, but be careful because the fake sugars will actually stimulate your hunger for sweet, fatty foods An abundance of sweet, fatty, non-nutritional foods, and you will gain weight. Drink in your diet sodas. Diet sodas and the artificial sweeteners have positive reinforcing effects, right? Like I said before, the same thing that alcohol makes you feel good, cheeses make you feel good. I forgot the protein in the cheese that actually does that, right? It means that your body or your microbiome is gonna try to get you to eat and drink that stuff all the time, right? To make sure that we can get as much as possible to satisfy our cravings, right? Cycle, cycle, cycle. What are you gonna eat next time? What are you gonna eat next time, right? Are any of you taking care of loved ones that are getting tube feedings from a peg tube? Please learn how to read the labels and question the food. Two of them I've read before, Jevity and Diabetic Source feedings for the peg tube. The first ingredient is water, the second, Third, fifth, and sixth ingredients are high fructose corn syrup. What diabetics are getting high fructose corn syrup? One of my friends said, well, no wonder my mom is sugar is 600 after I feed her. What the? Why do people that have to have tube feedings need sugar? They can't taste it anyway, right? They just need the nutrition. People who don't even have diabetes and are having these problems have to take insulin and PO diabetic medications to decrease the sugar in their systems to get their pancreas working a little bit harder because of the stuff that they're putting in our healthy foods for our patients and our loved ones who are sick. Please check your over-the-counter medications too, your multivitamins and your prescription medications for sugar 
or natural flavors added. Now, yes, you have to add, maybe add a little bit of something, something to the syrup for your child who won't take the medications, but do they need it in the first place? Maybe not. Please comment below. What are you feeding your family? Like I said, high fructose corn syrup has many, many names. Now that we know the word high fructose corn syrup, they got a little bit smarter and changed it. Anything with the word corn in it, corn solids, corn syrups, corn malts, corn sugar, isoglucose, glucose slash fructose, anything with a syrup, anything with just basically fructose, that means they added it in. It's not good for you. Anything with the word corn or fructose, just be careful and totally avoid them if possible, okay? Many doctors, di dentists, researchers, and scientists are saying exactly the same thing and they're trying to get it out there. Get it out of your daily food and drinks, please. By stopping buying these foods, and stopping buying these drinks, maybe that's gonna be the only way that the big food companies actually get it into their brains that we're not gonna put up with it anymore. We're getting sicker and other people are getting rich and we're getting worse because of it, because of it, because they add it to just about everything. Like I said, some things don't need to be sweet. It's in everything. We are and we will be the difference Yes, we will. And I'm not gonna make sure, absolutely. So like I said in my last lecture, my sugar lecture, what is the best sweetener? What is God's sugar? It's fruit, right? And it's so sweet if you eat it at the right time, right? Like I told you before, I use mostly honey. I do use blackstrap molasses and real maple syrup if I need it, right? And all those things have vitamins and antioxidants and minerals. Some of them have prebiotics to help your microbiome, okay? Look at all these nutrients compared to the sugar and the high fructose corn syrup and the fake sugars that, are, that you're getting in your processed food that you eat all the time. Next week, I'm gonna be talking about the fake sugars. My sugar lecture had to be broken up into three different things, all right? And don't think that agave is better for you either. I used to get agave, you know what? It's fructose, it's in your yogurt, it's in your breakfast bars, 70 to 90% glucose slash fructose, which means there's more fructose, right? And there's more fructose, it's not good for you. It has to be balanced. A little sugar is okay for you. Five to nine teaspoons a day. But who does that? Even if you're trying to do great with low sugar and be on that special diet, you have no idea because you don't know what those words are on the bottom of the labels, right? The bottom, right? What does your microbiome say? What do the bad boys in your second brain say? Give me some sugar, baby. That's what they're saying. And they have no idea if you're eating regular sugar or if you're eating a fake sugar, right? Like I said, sometimes you don't have a choice because of your microbiome. Sugar they're finding out is the most negative thing that we can put in our body. And fake sugars, including high fructose corn syrup, are much worse. You just need to break that habit, right? I'll name some Netflix documentaries below so you can watch it yourself. Um, Fed Up, like I said, is a great one that lists most of the hidden sugar and their names. Um, please email me with my email address, ccathyc1111 at yahoo.com, and I will give you a copy of my reference page so you can find out the books too okay i'll do anything that i can to help you guys please don't eat the stuff anymore that's bad for you if you want to eat steak every once in a while that's fine if you want to have your pastas and stuff like that that's fine just be careful of high fructose corn syrup that's in there your body does not like it 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 can't digest it well it gives you fast and high sugar spikes that nobody, not even if you're not a diabetic, cannot handle. And you'll age faster and you will suffer. You will most likely suffer with diseases and illnesses, right? Cancer only loves sugar. Imagine what it does to high fructose freaking corn syrup, right? At least I didn't cry this time, right? Last time I was very upset. So next week, we're going to talk about fake sugars. High fructose corn syrup is definitely one of them. We're going to talk about the fake sugars. You know, the ones and the cute little pink and blue 
brown and yellow packets. That's what we're going to talk about next week. My name is Chatty Kathy. Thank you so much for joining me for this little podcast. I know it's a short one. I'm sure you guys are very happy about that. <laughs> next week we'll talk about we'll talk about the um, other sugars too, and then we're going to get onto something positive. I just I can't study about nutrition anymore. Maybe we'll talk about positivity or laughter because that does so many great things for the body. My name is Chatty Kathy. Thank you so much for joining me today. Love, learn, and take control. And yes, we are. And yes, I am. And please love, like, subscribe, and share. Please tell other people. The more people that subscribe, the more times I can actually talk to you guys and get to know even more people. And please comment below. I love the texts that everybody sends me that I know. I appreciate all your love and support. I'm here for you guys. I really, really am. So I have 12 podcasts now, 12 of them on my site. Oh my goodness. Just go to Kathy Copperthwaite on YouTube and all the videos are up there also. None of them have been banned yet and I haven't gotten in trouble for cussing or crying because I'm actually maintaining very well. <laughs> I appreciate you guys listening to me. Chatty Kathy here again. I love you. Thank you so much. I will see you next week. Bye.